Okay, we're back. Um, slightly different apron and hair because it's, it's a different day. But we got we finally got the ring out of the pickle and it's in the vise now. Um, I want to mention one thing about the vise. You can make your own, if you don't have this thing of Bobby and this bench type of bench pan, you can cut a semicircular hole into your regular bench pan and also file a groove around the outside of uh, your standard ring clamp here. So I'm going to use this since this is what I have. And um, what we're going to do now, and this is optional, especially with a setting this large, but it's called, um, we're going to be drilling a hole through this and finishing the back side of it, which is called an azure. Um, and it facilitates cleaning and it also helps light to get through and help the stone to glitter more. So um, basic drilling stuff, go ahead and uh, punch your center for your drill bit. Now the rule of thumb is the size of the drill is approximately a third the size of the stone. Um, in this case it's about two millimeters more or less. Um, I always tend to go slightly less. So this I'm using a 12 gauge um, drill bit for this which is somewhere between a 46 and a 47. There is no actual 12 gauge drill bit. You have to do the smaller or larger. So go ahead and, and cut the, drill the hole. And one, one reason I wait until this point to do it is because I can tell where the middle of the setting is. So now we have a little hole in there. And you can leave it like this if you want, but the fancy way to do this is to take a round burr, ball burr, um, and I always, by the way, all my burrs are high speed steel burrs, they're HSS, um, and that's <clears throat> because they last longer and they can handle the heat. Um, also, one thing I should be using, which I finally got this in a jar, I'm going to put it a little on top, this is Burr Life. You can use win oil, wintergreen, or beeswax, but you should lubricate your burrs to help them last longer, and I just dip it in there. So, now we're going to take our little drippy ball burr and I'm going to come at there's you see the hole there I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna round this out on the inside and it's just gonna recess it and bevel it a little bit I'm gonna turn it over this way because I can't go um, straight up and down so I have to come in from the sides So we'll have a close-up of this, but uh, it's just slightly beveled um, on the inside. It's just a more professional way to finish the inside of the ring. It also removes any burrs, which still is a little one in there. You can feel it with your fingers. So, like I said, you don't have to do this, but if you want to make professional jewelry, I'd recommend it. So next step, we're going to um, bring this ring up to its final polish, or almost final polish and um, then set the stone. Okay, um, so now I noticed on this ring that there is a solder seam in here. Let's say that you forgot to clean your solder up before you um, put the ring together, or dome the ring. So um, this has got a nice big fat glob in here. So I, this is an aluminum oxide, uh, oh God, what's it called? Solder, so no, what is it? That's cheat, sorry. Tapered wheel. And um, what I'm going to do is just put this little tapered wheel guy on, on the inside. I'll try to move so you can see. And just start to clean this solder up. Don't, oh, I forgot. Don't forget to suit up with your mask and your goggles if you're using power tools. Where'd it go? So I'm just going to move this back and forth across that solder seam until it gets nice and level and it starts to disappear on me. As you can see, this is a polished finish side. You can't see that solder. Even though it's silver solder, you, can, you can't you can see it. Um, so you want to get that same kind of finish on the interior of this. Um, and that's why I use this. You can also use the round, uh, I think they have these in round aluminum oxide, which would work too. I like these a little better. So I'm just going to take this down until it's, like I said, almost invisible and then at that point when I get to that point then I'm going to move to 
Um, it's just like sandpaper. You're going to move to a, a you know a finer grit, and uh, you want to get it to a point where the whole inside is going to be beautifully shiny, like the outside. They make different grits of these little whatever they are polishing sticks. So uh, it's good to have a set of these if you're going to be doing this kind of work. Um, for the exterior, um, brass turns gets a copper uh, coating on it when you solder it. Um, it's basically just the copper part of the alloy coming to the surface and you don't have to panic. Um, we're going to use a fine grit sanding disc here. Um, I would use 400 grit sandpaper. Well, this is a little rougher. This is about 320. And I'm just going to take down the, um, I'll try to sand backwards. I just want to remember the curve and not file flat, keep it moving until you get all that top or off the outside. And then once you do that, then switch to your 400. These um, sanding discs that I use, which are, um, there'll be a link to my website where I talk about what what they are, where you get them, and the way I put them on. Uh, they come in grits of, um, I think from 120 up to 1200. So this one is a four, and then I'll go to the eight, and then this is my, th actually maybe it only goes to a thousand, this is my thousand. And that's as, I'm, that's as far as I'm going to sand it up to a thousand uh, grit on here, and then we're going to go into the buffing. So I'm going to finish up this part here, this little tiny bit. At this point too, you can also make sure that you remove all the, any solder that happens to be leaking out around. Uh, your setting. Hopefully you didn't put tons and tons of solder and have a huge mess to clean up. This is pretty good so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to touch it up a bit and then we'll polish it and um, then set the stone. So I'm going to get this finished. If you are using my sanding disc system, occasionally the glue on the back that's not covered by the other disc gets on the ring and I just use a little scotch braid on it to scrub it off with some soap and water. Um, it's the only annoying thing about it, but maybe someday somebody will make them the right way so I don't have to do this. So now what we're going to do is go on in Rouge, and Rouge is an oil-based product, and um, I'm going to heat up when I spin this nasty dirty buff in there. So I've got this loaded with Rouge now. Um, this is where you're going to find out if you sanded it enough because if you buff this up with the rouge and you still see uh, sanding marks you need to go back to the drawing board. Okay, I'm going to cover these prongs so the buff doesn't catch them. And go ahead and start buffing this up. Try to get the edge up around the bezel. I mean, the, not bezel, the setting. You also uh, want to buff up your setting also. so. Hopefully your setting isn't all um, have porosity or anything from the casting. If it does, you need to sand it first. So I'm just going to go around this ring and hopefully I won't see any scratch marks and it will be very, very pretty and shiny. So that looks pretty good. I'm not going to do this forever, but you get the idea. Uh, to remove, oh I get so steamed up I can't see. There's a little black out there going on the left eye. Um, to get the, the black goop from the uh, buffing process off, I just use like Dawn or some kind of grease cutting, uh, oil cutting in this case, soap to um, and a toothbrush, old toothbrush, and just kind of scrub it off. Uh, but I'm going to wait to the end and do that when I clean the whole ring. Um, so now we're going to go on to the setting part. I might wash my hands though, so I'll be right back again. Oh, wait, before I leave, one more thing I forgot to mention. You can also leave this not shiny and keep it like at the 400 grit and have a kind of a, a rough surface. Um, you can also do this if you polish it too, but you can also burnish these edges here for an additional amount of shine. 
Um, it also smooth it down. You can burnish from the inside too. So this kind of like brightens the whole thing up. So that's another option for treating your edges. I don't even know if you can tell the difference on this high polish, but it would definitely show up uh, on a more matte finished um, ring band. So now I'm gonna wash my hands and then we'll sit the stone. So for the setting part of this ordeal, I mean project, <laughs> God, I'm bad. Um, is to talk a little bit about the tools. Now one thing that if you're over 40 you'll definitely need is some kind of magnifiers because um, you won't be able to see well enough probably unless you're superwoman or man. Um, I had a teacher who taught me the, this little trick here. This is a, a some kind of old bamboo pen or something but what he told me about was he took beeswax and mixed it in with a little um, plaster just a little and make these little sticky sticks for holding the stone. So um, this was one I just stuck on a piece of steel that I twisted. Um, they get really kind of dirty, but they still work. And I just kind of warm it up with my fingers to get it sticky again. And then you can pop your stone on the end of that for setting, which makes it a lot easier than trying to with your fingers. I'm sure there's an official term for that, but works. Um, as far as cutting, uh, these are pre-notched, but I'm going to pretend it's not because I do that. Um, if it wasn't pre-notched on the interior, you need a place for the stone, it's girdle to sit. And the stone's got this, this, you know, angle like this. You can't just plop it in flat or the, the little coulee at the bottom will, couldn't, or however everybody else pronounces it, will crack and chip. So you want the stone supported around its girdle and that's what this seat thing is that we're going to be cutting. Um, now there's a couple of ways to do this. You can use a round burr, which I showed you before and I don't know where I put it, um, or a setting burr. Um, we'll have a close up, I hope, and or a heart burr. Now they both do the same thing but in a different way. Uh, the setting burr is more a downward cut and if you can see it's um, shaped like the base of a stone. Um, you've got your Kool-Aid and you've got your girdle here. Um, the, and this cuts straight down. The um, heart burr is more of an undercutting burr and it too reflects the shape of the stone but it's angled at the top so it can cut into metal like this. Like a spot like that. Whereas this one, the setting burr, is going to cut more like this. Um, they're both useful um, and they both can be used in this situation here. Uh, other people use round burrs. I don't think you have as much, I don't think this seat gets as angled as it could be so I, I don't tend to use those but I do use these two. Um, so those are the burrs. Um, as far as setting, there's several options also. Um, there is the hammer hand piece you can use but I tend not to use that with prong settings. Um, this is a um, prong setting plier. Notice one leg is shorter than the other and I'll show you, I'll do one leg of the prong with this to show you how it works. Um, bezel pusher is another option um, and this is one that I made that has a bigger surface area. Um, that's that on that. Oh and this, this is, this is my new favorite little tool and this you just put over the top of the whole um, setting and push down and twirl and it pushes all the prongs in um, beautifully. So this is my new baby that I use all the time now. Um, then if then afterwards we're going to clean up the tips of the prongs to refine the edges a little more and, and buff them. But sometimes, and I've done this, one scratches our stone. Oh my god, what are we going to do? So <laughs> this little trick I found is um, I use um, lapidary um, buffing compounds and if it's a mild scratch I use this stuff it's a 50,000 mesh diamond compound polish and I load up a um, felt little buff with it and just add a little water and and uh, take off any light scratches if you do have your scratches you'll have to use different grits and I, and I, I don't have them on me right now so I can't just talk to you about it and then we'll be using a um, felt buff and our rouge to uh, buff up our tips at the end. Another option if you want is to use a cup burr. Um, you want to get a cup burr that f is not too big and not too small oh, that just fits right 
perfectly over the end of the prong so you can round them. There's a bunch of different ways to shape the prongs and I'll talk about that a little bit when we go into that part. So let's get going. So I'm suited up, ready to go in here. Uh, I'm going to use the heart burr. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about the burrs is they need to be the same size if there's, okay, let's go back. There's two schools of thought on how to cut the prongs. One is that you use a, a burr that's slightly smaller than the stone and you cut the prongs individually. Um, there are things called stops which will keep the burr from going too far down. It, it, they sit on, the stop sits on top of the prongs and allows the cutting edge to only go down a certain depth. Um, I'm not going to do that because, like I said, this is already pre-notched, but um, if it wasn't, I would mark the interior surface of this all the way around so that I knew that it was level. So if I, especially if I was doing cutting one prong at a time, I tend to do um, all of them at once, but there's a little wiggle room in there, so you kind of push on one, and then you push on the next, and then I turn it and do the other uh, prongs. Um, it's kind of like one at a time, but it's not. <laughs> Because this thing is the exact size. If so, if you're doing the the setting where you're cutting almost cutting all of them at once, you want the uh, burr to be the same size as your stone. So this is a six millimeter uh, heart burr. So that's important to know. Okay, so um, you want to definitely have your optimizers. The deal here is you don't want to cut. You want to leave a third or more of the thickness of the metal. So don't overcut it or they become so fragile that when you bend it over they snap. So I don't have a lot of metal to work with here. I just want to give you a brief idea on how this works. Um, this one you can, let me bring it over here. I don't know if you can tell but this is just a little bit smaller than the prongs that are in here. Um, so I could close these up and get an exact fit on this but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you how to do the one on the one at a time. So um, I'm holding, let me go back here, sorry, it's very difficult to do this in the air. Um, I've got this in a, I guess this is perpendicular, and I'm going to just cut a little bit. And you want to you want to really bring it in when it's moving so it doesn't stick. I forgot the burr life again. That's really important, especially with your setting burrs. They get, and your heart burrs, they're, they're expensive, so you don't want... You want them to last a long time. These are also high speed steel. So use your um, lubricant and bring it in and just cut a little bit. And you're trying to keep your hand exactly the same place. And you're not gonna you're not gonna go too slow and you're not gonna go too fast. It's a little Goldilocks action here, just right. I'm gonna show you how to cut with the um, setting burr. At this point, I'm going to lubricate it here. And um, you want to make sure that your prongs are all straight up and down. Um, use a pair of chain nose pliers to get them square and check the fit. Um, remember, this is six millimeters, so is my stone. So this needs to fit in here snugly. And then, um, so I want to go in with it moving. Put this in here now and go ahead and cut it like that. Um, honestly, on this one though, I think the best option is, since it's already pre-notched, is to use this um, heart burr. So I'm gonna go in and hopefully there's still some material left for me to cut. Um, and I'll finish that up and then we'll go on to putting the stone in and doing the pre-setting. So now we're at the piece de resistance. We're going to take our little stone here and we're gonna pop it in to our setting. Now the big deal here is that we want this thing to be flat. That's why having one long fingernail on your thumb is nice because you can hold it flat. There are actually tools you can use to make sure this is flat, but we're not going to get them out. I, I, I draw the line at some tools. So I'm going to take the little bezel pusher here and this is kind of presetting. What we're going to do is just start to tighten down the um, prongs. Um, I've got this little whoopee over here. It's just a little uh, groove in the side of my bench pin 
and you can use sometimes when you push this way the other prong moves too so in this case I'm just gonna start the first prong by pushing it over just over and it was kind of like a little up not big up okay and the stone move but we're not it's not locked in yet so it's okay so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna push the opposite side which I hope is this one over here I want to check to make sure it's flat again I'm going to push it and then I'm going to put her back in here because I think these prongs are probably sturdy enough that I don't need to have them blocked okay now I want to switch to a different tool here um, this is the pliers um, and how they work is the short end is going to go down down oh god this is just this thing doesn't turn for some reason this the 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 high parts so what we're <laughs> let's try to say this in English this one is the one I'm going to be pulling down this prong on the outside here and you take the small end and put it on the other prong across from it and this comes in at an angle and you just squeeze them shut while kind of pulling them slightly this way and that curls that over like that so you want to keep checking your stone make sure you're centered in here and eventually you're going to do north south east west on these by the way um, other ways of holding rings um, jet set which is a really cool um, heat plastic plastic that you heat up and it becomes rock hard um, and you just use hot water to heat it up it's a really good um, medium for holding a ring um, you can also um, use lapidary cement like dop, dop wax on the end of a like a big wooden dowel or something to stick your ring in um, or you can use this clamp or GRS uh, system like I have over here let me pop this out so I can show it to you the ring fits on the outside here um, when I'm done setting it I'll show you how it works because right now it's not a good time I want to make sure this ring this stone doesn't get lost so you keep checking for your height. This one slipped down a little bit, so I'm going to pop it back up with the with the uh, file here. Okay, now I want to show you the last system. This is the uh, setting system, and this fits over the top of all the prongs. And you just push and turn. Oh, and the ring is not supposed to be moving in the clamp. And it pushes all the prongs down. So I'm pushing pretty hard and I'm just turning it around here. Let me check. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, once the ring gets back out in the public eye here, um, you want to check to make sure your angles are all right on all the uh, prongs. There's one here that's kind of standing up too high, and I need to push that back over. This is um, where my groove will come in handy. So I'm going to put this into back into my groove and get my bezel pusher. And I'm going to come down from the top and kind of push towards the stone at this point. So you're basically curling the prongs up over the stone. I'm going to double check it. I'm going to do all of them. And I know this one's okay because that's the one that was overset. So you just want to check all of your prongs to make sure that they're at the right angles if they're not you need to take them back out and uh, I use a hold on let me get it you could probably make these by grinding a pair of pliers down I found these somewhere I have no idea where so don't ask me because they've been here a while but if you need to go back in and straighten them up you can use these little kind of guys like this to pull the prong back up and reset the stone if it didn't sit right <clears throat> so this ring holding system I got from Otto Fry um, and basically what you do is you find one of the, they come with all these little plastic thingies um, and you want to find one that's close to your ring size so in this one I'm going to use this you put this cone shaped thing with the screw through it like this put your ring on and then you screw it in here and what this does this little cone shape it ex these have a 
cracking them and this expands this so it it opens up and makes the plastic expand and holds the ring really tight onto the shape so right now I'm, t I'm pushing the cone in deeper until this ring gets really tight and doesn't move okay so at this point this thing is on here and it's really nice to work with it goes you know all in different directions so when you're trying to set something you get all, any angle you need to make it easier to set with and um, this is what I primarily use for um, setting because of its flexibility inherent flexibility It'd be nice if I put the key in the right place come on guys so that's just just an FYI um, most people have the other vice so that's why I'm using that so we've set the ring um, and right now what I want to do these tops um, are a little rough uh, from the setting and the pushing the metal over um, so I'm going to clean these up a little bit. I'm going to get set up for that. And we'll do that in a hair and a half. Hair and a half? I don't know. So at this point, um, we're going to clean these ends up. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, I already mentioned you can use a cupper on these ends and round them up with a cupper. Um, you can use the sanding. That's not a sanding disc. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to use uh, the 400 here. And one thing I like to do when I do this is to keep my finger as over the stone as much as possible. Um, I'm going to put a close-up here so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm basically just taking this edge down with the sanding disc. You need to be careful with the sanding disc because you can literally, you know, like I talked about before, you can really sand your stone down. Um, and all I'm going to do in this is take off any of the uncomfortably marred places. Also check your sides in case you marred it if you used uh, either, either the setting pliers or the um, bezel pusher if they do get scratched up. So I'm just going to do one prong here and to show you what it looks like. Um, so I've sanded it um, flat. You don't want to sand it so thin that it becomes like paper and because then it loses effectiveness as a as an anchor for the stone so it's one of those the porridge is just right again thing you know you want to take enough off so it's not bulky on top of the stone and not too much that you don't have a piece of tin foil over the top of the stone so i think with that 400 um, i'm probably good to go um right onto the rouge and i forgot my mask again it's just such a bad example oh my god all right so then I'm just going to go in once again, keep my finger over the stone and hit this little point in the areas that I uh, cleaned up over here with the, see all that black, that's all the silver. Um, so I polished that up beautifully. I will have a close up of it. Another thing you can do um, if you want to get really fancy and especially with bigger prongs is to take a file that has um, a non um, filey edge on it um, and you can go in and cut like a triangular shape on them. I'm not going to do it because I don't want a triangular shape but you can file these ends. Make sure though that the file doesn't have any, um, um, oh god what's the word, any cuts on it that it's smooth on the back. Um, and I would even probably use the micro files on something like this at that point. So I'm going to finish up these prongs, um, finish, do one last buff on it, clean it up, and show you the finished product in a second. So here's our finished product, um, and it's my pretend gold ring, because the brass looks great now, but of course it will tarnish. You could spray this with some kind of lacquer, but um, I don't like that, so I don't do that. <laughs> Because it always chips, peels, especially on a ring. You know, you can have it commercially plated with gold or something. But um, we're not doing that in the video. Um, I just want to reiterate on the stone setting. I don't know if I was clear enough. Um, if you look at these pictures, when you're pushing the uh, prong over on the stone, you want to make sure that it sits on the top of the stone here and doesn't have a gap like this. The prong needs to be really flat on top of the side of the um, stone there. Now when you're doing the um, 
final sanding here, you want to kind of round this edge out and, and make it smooth because otherwise it's going to look like this. So I wanted that to be clear too on what we're actually doing there. And then this of course is, you know, sanded and then buffed. Um, so those are the two little details. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I think in this setting you should use the heart burr. Uh, anything else I can possibly think of before I say goodbye? Sorry this was such a long video. Um, I didn't expect it to be this long. But sometimes it takes that long and that's okay. We'll try to do a short one next time. Um, so this is Nancy LT Hamilton with a new wedding ring. And I thank you for coming. And I hope you learned something today. See you on the next one. Ciao.